Hello everyone again. This is Dr. Vishal Gawali. In my last uh, two videos, I talked about preparing for the SAE exam and plus two slash entrance exams. Uh, today, I want to talk about uh, medical studies. Um, I was uh, I I'm frequently asked uh, from medical students in Nepal about how to prepare for the MBBS exams, uh, but uh, I think uh, MBBS exams are quite different compared to uh, plus two exams or the SLC exams that you have taken because your MBBS study is is very important for your career. Your MBBS study is something that you will use throughout your life as a doctor. Uh, like you know, if I if I think about it, uh, I learned so much of uh, trigonometry in uh, my SLC. I can't think of a single place where I have used it, except uh, maybe I used it uh, to solve some physics uh, questions in class two, but after that, it has never come to any use. Um, there are so many things that we have learned that have never come to any use. Uh, but MBBS is different. Here, everything that you learn will come or may come into use one day or the other. Whatever you learn is important. You will be treating real patients, real people. And their health, their life will be in your hands. So when you're studying MBBS, I think unlike studying for other exams, your MBBS study should be, should be uh, done very well. You need to focus on Diseases, whenever I used to study in my MBBS, I used to, uh, no matter what I was studying, I always used to think of a patient uh, who might come up with that disease. Even if I did not see a real patient, I used to imagine a patient for every possible disease. Uh, that helps in, in memory. Like if someone says, if someone uh, says the name of any disease, if someone says, uh, lambert eaton syndrome then instead of trying to remember oh, what was what was lips what was uh, lambert eaton uh, syndrome instead of trying to remember that from the book or from the lecture it's much easier if you imagine a patient if you had remembered in terms of a patient or oh, there was a patient with a small cell lung cancer who presented with paraneoplastic syndrome uh, including lambert eaton uh, syndrome and the way I differentiated Lambert Eaton from myasthenia gravis was um, I asked about uh, uh, the muscle weakness and how it improved or worsened with the uh, increasing amount of uh, work uh, as the day progressed. Uh, and so, if you had remembered in terms of uh, an imaginary or a real patient, then that your memory becomes quite uh, uh, long lasting. Um, so if you have had the opportunity to see a patient that day, I know that in Nepal, first you do basic sciences and then do clinical sciences, but even during basic sciences, I think uh, you do have the opportunity to go and see patients uh, in the affiliated hospital. So if you have seen any patient at all that day, read everything that you can about that particular patient. Even if you are a basic sciences student, read about the anatomy or the pathology or the microbiology related to that patient. You know, for example, if you saw a patient with gastric cancer, uh, then when you are back home, you study everything related to the anatomy of the stomach, and the physiology of the stomach, all the drugs that are being used for diseases uh, related to the GI system, um, the pathology of gastric cancer, pathology of peptic ulcer, anything uh, related to that uh, patient um, directly or even remotely. Uh, because when you have a real face, then it gives you motivation to know everything that you can to, to figure out how to help that patient. And if you do not have that real patient, just imagine a patient, just imagine there is someone that has a, a condition that you're studying about and try to help that imaginary patient as much as you can. Uh, that's the best tip I can give uh, because medicine without uh, humanity is, is uh, not the right way to approach medicine. 
um, because in the long term, like you ultimately become a doctor and you ultimately need to take care of patients by yourself. And people will want a doctor who is compassionate, who is knowledgeable, who is evidence-based and who has the patient's best interest in his or her heart. Um, so if you try to imagine uh, a patient while studying MBBS, then that will not only make you make your memory long lasting, but will also make you a, a good doctor. And one special uh, uh, factor about how uh, um, MBBS studies, especially in, in Nepal or other low income countries, I guess, is that we focus more on rote memory and, and trying to remember uh, uh, things rather than trying to um, learn the evidence-based approach to treating a patient. Uh, but uh, I'll talk about evidence-based medicine in my next video. But for today, I think uh, as a MBBS student, as a medical student, we always need to uh, think about why if, if someone says, okay, this patient has uh, this patient presented with history of fall and seizures and we did an MRI of the brain and we found that this patient has glioblastoma um, and we are treating that patient with temozolomide, then there are so many whys to answer there. First, why did a patient with brain tumor present with seizures and ataxia? Like, why? What's the correlation? That will lead you into studying neuroanatomy, neurophysiology, and then you will read about radiology, how, why MRI was the best modality of diagnosis, then why not a CT scan, and what does a glioblastoma show up like in a, in a, in a MRI of the brain, and how do you know that it's not uh, it's, it's not something else, uh, it's not a, a benign lesion, or it's especially in, in countries like our, like ours, uh, like Nepal, who oh, is it, uh, you know, a, 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 a tubercular disease, or uh, sometimes even uh, is it neurocystis or poses, uh, other, other infectious causes. And then what does the biopsy show like? There you read about pathology. Uh, how do you differentiate a glioblastoma? And then if you are in clinical medicine, then probably um, you may have heard about timozolomide, but uh, yeah, if, uh, mm, you are doing pharmacology, then you might want to read about what type of drug timozolomide is. So I'm just trying to give an example. And because I'm an oncologist, all my examples are related to cancer, but uh, this is how you should be thinking about uh, how you should be approaching uh, medicine um, or your MBBS studies. So if you saw a patient with, with uh, uh, glioblastoma, then this is how you approach your whole approach to the patient. And then when someone says, this is the treatment, uh, uh, probably timozolomide for glioblastoma is not taught in EMBBS. Let's say, let's say trastuzumab for her to positive breast cancer. If someone says this is the treatment, then uh, you need to look at the evidence. Like why are we, why why are we treating that condition with this treatment? Uh, let's let's take a non-cancerous example uh, for the sake of simplicity. Let's say okay. Um, peptic ulcer disease, or uh, let's say S. pylori uh, positive uh, peptic ulcer. So the teacher, the book will say that if the patient has tested positive for S. pylori, then we need to eradicate it. So we give an S. pylori eradication therapy. And they will tell you that there's a triple therapy which leads to S. pylori eradication, which includes a combination of a proton pump inhibitor plus amoxicillin plus. Uh, one more uh, antibiotic, depending on the situation. Um, now, the approach is not to remember that. The approach is not, to, of course, you have to remember triple therapy, the doses, the duration. But the question you should be asking is, why is this the best treatment? How did the book come up with this? Or how did the teacher come up with this? How do they know that this is the best approach towards eradicating a spinery? That's how you should think. And the answer is, of course, there were several trials in which they tested patients with a spinery positive um, with 
triple therapy. And then they found there was a high cure rates versus maybe double therapy. Um, and okay, so this is the evidence. And that's how you can even counsel the patients. If the, if the patient says, why do I need this treatment? And you can say, okay, if you get this triple therapy for 10 days, then your chances of being as pyloid negative and thereby reducing the risk of uh, gastric cancer progression um, from, from ulcer would be this. Uh, um, you can like you need to be able to know the benefits and risks of every treatment or even investigation that you are offering a patient. Uh, that's about how you study during your medical studies. But uh, if we're talking about how to approach the MBBS exams, now again, that's, that's completely different, unfortunately. And a good doctor may not score good grades in our medical system exams. And a person who scores very highly in medical exams may not turn out to be a good doctor. Uh, so that's that's totally different. Um, there are so many things to memorize and I, I, I'm hoping, or I'm guessing that even as of today, the exam system has not changed much and you should still rely a lot on a rote memory. Um, and then there is a whole list of practical exams and how to tackle that well. And uh, I had even written a book about it, uh, about uh, how to approach the practical exams of MBBS uh, in Nepal. Uh, but uh, yeah, in terms of uh, tackling the MBBS exams, rote memory is important. Uh, focusing on important uh, questions are important. Uh, and for practical, it's more about the approach. But for, for theory, I, I don't think there are any shortcuts. You have to remember things. You can make mnemonics. Uh, you can pra practice with your friends. You can study a lot. You can keep revising. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, it is, it is a difficult uh, exam uh, because simply there are so many things to remember about. Um, but uh, how to remember? differs from person to person. If you have built a strong foundation based on concepts, that's uh, very helpful. And as I, as I mentioned earlier, if you have remember in terms of patients, then that's very easy to remember. Uh, instead of remembering all the features of a disease, you just remember that patient and that makes it uh, easier to remember. And the third is you can remember in terms of flow charts and diagrams and pictures. Um, but the easiest of all I find is to remember in terms of concepts and patients. Um, I hope this has been helpful uh, and I wish you all best of luck. Uh, the most important uh, point about going to medical school is to become a great doctor, is to become a compassionate doctor and not just simply to pass the medical exams. Uh, 